In today's video, I'm going to show you a really neat trick, and this is basically just some elementary electrical engineering to me, but I guess it could be very complicated to the average novice or do-it-yourselfer. So I'm going to show you a really cool trick that anybody can use. Now, for my demonstration, I'm going to assume that you're using this on a motorcycle. So I'm going to use a motorcycle brake slash taillight system as an example. Now on a typical motorcycle you would have a bulb. Now I'm using LEDs and this only applies to LEDs by the way. You cannot use a standard bulb filament for this video. It can only apply to LEDs. I'm going to I'm going to assume that you are getting away from the standardized bulbs. You don't like them. They're ugly yellow and they're just heat generating ugly things that you just want to do away with. You want to step up and get something really cool. You want to get a multi you know, colored LED or something that's much more brighter. It's going to give you more safety, more attention, and just more bling to your ride. That's what I'm going to use. So I have here an LED strip, which is a six LED strip, and I have another bulb here. And again, all these are just two wire lights, just two wires, positive and negative. That's going to flick my light on. They're all 12 volts. So if you have one bulb and it's a single pole and it can only have the ability to do on and off, such as this one, for instance, let me show you. These here are my two wires that are coming from my 12 volt power supply. These here are the two wires from my light bulb. So typically, you would wire it up and you would get that. Your light will come on, flip the switch or the brake light or the whatever switch it is, and that's what you get. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do two different things. It's going to be a running light, which is going to give you a lower output which you would have when the, when the vehicle is running like the parking lights and then when you hit the brake it's going to do that function so we're going to do both functions with a single pole light here's how we do it for my demonstration I only recommend that anybody uses a resistor um, I have my meter set right now on resistance under 2000 ohms I got 0.290 so I know this is about 300 ohms this resistor right here okay I do not recommend that you use anything higher than 600 ohms for this application. Now, I don't know what you do and don't know about electricity, but the lower the, lower the resistance, the higher the wattage output you're going to get. So it's okay if you want to get some different resistors and, and fool around between, you know, 250 ohms to 600 ohms, that's fine. But anything above or below that, I don't suggest it. If you want to do it, you know, knock yourself out. But for me, this is what I suggest you do, and that's all I can ever do. Let's tell you what I think you should do. So how you do it is this. You're going to need your resistor, which we already have, and two of these. Now these here are 5 amp diodes. Okay, You're going to want to have the anode side, the, non the non-banded side. The side with the, with the band there. You want that going towards the light because positive energy is only going to flow on this side of the diode. So on a normal light, you only have power, one power input, but for us, since we're a little crazy, we're going to have two. The diodes are required because they isolate, so what happens is this. You have these two diodes going like so to the light. If 12 volts gets applied on this side, it will not feed back onto this one because you don't want that. You don't want the parking lights interrupting your brake light circuit and you want your brakes interfering with your parking light circuit. So the diodes are there to protect that exact function. So getting into the wiring, I have my light here. It's already grounded to my power supply. So right here all we're working with is the wire that's going to get 12 volts positive to turn this light on. So what I'm going to do is I have my resistor. The resistor doesn't make a difference which side you connect it to. It's non-polarized capacitor. You're going to want to twist your diode. And again, this is just for a demonstration. I'm not going to solder and heat shrink and get onto all that crazy stuff. I'm just going to show you how it's done and it's important because you have to see what I'm actually doing. So the power is going to get applied into the diode like so through the resistor and to the light. And right here, while we're at that connection, we're also going to take the other diode, band going towards the light on the diode, by the way. And I'm going to write in the, uh, com the comment section below about these diodes and what they're called and which 
sides what goes to what in case you get confused but basically this is what it looks like you got the diode with the band side heading towards the light the resistor on the one side and over here just the diode going straight into the connection to turn the lights on so here's what happens this is so cool there's our light now when I apply 12 volts to the resistor wire No, let me turn the lights off so you can see it a little bit. Okay. Just want to darken it up just a little bit so you can see it. This here is going to be the wire which is going through the resistor. Right there. You can see there's your running lights, your parking lights. And when power gets applied straight into it, there's your brake lights. See that? Running lights, brake. Just like that. Isn't that fun, playing with voltage? How cool is that? save yourself a whole lot of work and this actually applies to LED strip lights as well doesn't matter how many LEDs for the most part because LEDs draw so little I mean unless you really have some serious rig going on okay so there's my ground so this strip is grounded now I'm gonna connect this to my little rig now here is through the resistor there's your running lights, brake lights. See that? How cool is that? So like I said, read the description. I'm going to have all this notated so that way you can go out and get yourself what you need. But just again, real quick, these are two 5 amp diodes. Up here I have my resistor. I am using a three, about a, approximately a 300 ohm res resistor. And I recommend using anywhere from a 250 to a 600 ohm resistor for this application on LED lights. Works on strip lights. Just about any LED light you could throw at it. Anything that's going to operate between 11.5 and, and 15 volts. This works great. So I hope this helps you out and have fun doing it. This is a cool little trick. Have fun. Enjoy. Enjoy.